Hello and welcome to another uh, episode of the Easy Structure. This time we will look at good endings for black. The Easy Structure is one of the most important structures in chess. It can arise from a range of openings like the French, the Karakhan, or the Nimzo Indian, the Queen's Gambit, uh, the Meron, um, or as here in this game, the Sicilian. So it's a critical structure to master. And by the way, why I call it the easy structure is because the e it's an E pawn versus an C pawn. Uh, and I know some pl players uh, say shh instead of C, but uh, I, I kind of like the analogy. And it's also uh, easy to get, uh, but it's hard to play. Let's get into it with a great classic game where uh, Christopher Lutz wins against Jonas Papanian or whatever his name is uh, from Greece, a very strong Greek player by the way. I also beat him once so I can say that. Um, anyway, let's get on to it. It's going to be very instructive uh, on how to play the ending with black and how to especially assess the end game. So let's, without further ado, let's get into it. E4, C5, we are having a Sicilian here, and it's a C3 Sicilian, and by the way, that almost all the time leads to this kind of structure. And the question is, is it good or bad for black or white? I think we are, we are trying to sort of establish some sort of uh, an understanding of this structure. One thing we can say is that if white has a lot of uh, initiative, then of course it's good for him. If black has a lot of initiative, it's, got, uh, it's good for him. When I read uh, the Oeuvre uh, middle game uh, books when I was uh, much younger than now, uh, they were talking a lot about the queen side majority. Uh, the thing is, uh, I'm not sure that's such a big thing anymore. It, like it was an advantage in itself. And I think uh, nowadays uh, the, the understanding has moved on that it's probably rather black that have a, a sort of um, a structural advantage. Uh, and here we have um, the situation. And this is, by the way, the, we, we are just, we just entered the it happened here. We're having this uh, the structure here. We can see this is with the, the E pawn and this is the C pawn. Um, and take and queen E4. Uh, offering the exchange of uh, the queens. It's not so easy to get rid of because otherwise uh, well, black will come with this or this rook and so on. And there's also some pressure here. So you probably have to, uh, to exchange them. Uh, but it's also considered that this ending should probably be fine for black, for white. Uh, and, and it is, of course, not lost, but it's probably a little bit better for black. And, uh, and that's what not, that's not what the Oeuvre is saying. Or, and I is even think Sierraszewski in, uh, in endgame strategy is, is, is a little bit too ambitious on the white, uh, a little to be, a little bit too confident on the white, um, majority on the queen side. You can see here that white has this majority, uh, against, uh, Blacks uh, two here, and uh, and on the other side, uh, I'll just make majorities red. Uh, black has this majority against um, these two here, and and it turns out this is probably even though the the thing is, but the kings are closer to the pawns, meaning that it's less likely that these pawns will queen fast. These sometimes uh, the queen side can just. Managed to get some sort of a queen without the kings getting to the queen side. That's one of the things White is hoping for. Uh, also, they are they move rather fast on the on the queen side. Uh, the problem is that when black pawns uh, uh, move forwards in on the in the center and on the king side, black will get a big space advantage that would sort of spread to the queen side, and we will see this in the game. Um, so this game, this position is probably equal, but I would pr prefer to be black. I think the computer says it's 
uh, 0.15 for, for for black or something. Uh, anyway, uh, open file here, and here it comes a uh, very, of course, uh, if you follow this channel, you know you know this move will, will come. F6, uh, blocking uh, the square of the bishop and getting ready for this. And here is the thing. Putting a, a, a pawn on black is not making this bishop bad because these pawns will always be able to land on white later. So here you are just fighting for more space. And of course you are making the route for the king towards the center uh, easier. And b6, uh, exchanging, uh, asking the bishop where to go. Uh, I think uh, this bishop is... Uh, uh, not so happy. The thing is, if for instance, if it goes somewhere here, then maybe something like this, and 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 white has black has a serious a chance of uh, of taking over uh, the, the the initiative and and so on. So he took here. Now, big question: what to take back with? He took back with the rook. Makes sense because white will probably just play rook d1, putting a lot of pressure on. So now what? And the natural move is, of course, this one. And he takes here. And here is the big question. To take with the rook or with the bishop? The thing is, I think black has an advantage either way. But uh, you can't be sure. But, uh, but I think he probably have an advantage either way. So taking with the rook is not bad at all. Uh, and 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 white will black will have some chances in the ending if white plays well. It should be a draw. He should be able to make some sort of a fortress. But it's clear that black is pressing. He has a lot of flexibility with his pawns, which is important when you have a a bishop that is colorblind. Um, but he took with the bishop, and that probably gives more uh, winning chances keeping a rook on. And that's a, a general thing uh, you want to keep pieces on if you're playing for a win. And here comes uh, this e5 that probably surprised you a little bit, right? What is that e5? Uh, the thing is, this pawn will not stay here forever, and this will not be a bad bishop. The, it will, uh, the way this, the, the structure is, black will have no problems advancing the pawns, making the bishop quite strong. Um, and we can see that white has managed to, uh, to avoid having targets on the dark square, but that also means that he, he does have entry points for the bishop and the king uh, that could be hard to cover. And if you, for instance, put your knight here, which is very natural, uh, I'll make that uh, white, then uh, covering uh, all uh, the entry square, your knight is very passive and it gives black uh, a free reign on the king side. So king e2 makes sense, king e6, and um, knight e1 starts to regroup I'm not sure it's the, the best way. Maybe you should just have kept the knight there. H5, very, very normal and common uh, move in these kind of situations, just gaining space. And it's sometimes, and I remember that when I had uh, a lot less rating, I didn't understand these kind of moves. Why are you pushing your pawns? And it turns out it is for the long run, you will get a space advantage that will count in the long run. And he put his knight on, on c2, uh, taking away the black squares. And, uh, and it looks like he has some sort of a fortress, but black is actually, and he's still not afraid of putting the pieces on the dark square. And, and he's basically uh, going to play something like this, and here, and here, and, and put, keep putting pressure. And then he might consider a minority attack on the queen side to activate the rook. At the moment, he doesn't have uh, too much of a hurry. Um, and, and white is starting to aiming for this square, but we look at this square and we see that you can't really do much there. G6, uh, okay, uh, there is a limit to it. He's not going to put it on G5 yet. We'd rather play F5 here. Uh, and and even though the, the structure in itself uh, says something, but of course having a bishop also says something. Now he's threatening something, and um, 
and that is uh, probably knight b5 uh, hitting the the bishop and, and making sure that yeah if it was uh, if if black was not able to for example, play this move then he will lose a pawn here here oh, sorry um, oh, um, so rook c8 and bishop c5 and the trick of course is uh, is something like uh, this and rook e a8 and black wins a pawn because he's winning both this pawn and this pawn and that's not what you want and in and in general uh, black should be very uh, careful not to let white, uh, uh, white should be very careful not to let black activate the rook uh, so back again and hitting the knight and back again are you ready for a draw this is uh, not acceptable. A6. No, no draws here. Uh, something like like this is not good now. The bishop just settles here and then comes B5, winning. And in, anyway, black would be uh, white would be under serious pressure here. So knight E5, and but you're still undermining the knight with B5, or, or you're not here. You are undermining the knight with B5, um, and. And maybe he should just allow uh, this one to be taken and sit here and say okay and and hope for 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 active play later on. Um, he took and that's probably not good because this makes this knight less stable, and uh, it's already could be in some sort of trouble. And black white is is a little bit in getting into Sukhsvang. Uh knight here attacking the pawn. I think you could actually already play b4 here, but um, he decided to, to just cover it, king of one, and b4. And uh, and here black, of course something like this is 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 very typical, a uh, knight on the rim is dim and uh, and basically unable to, to get out, and, uh, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, so this is not what you want. So he goes, gets here, but the knight is not safe here. A good move for black is, of course, to limit the scope of the knight. This is what we do. This is the Steinitz way, just putting it here. And when there is uh, this kind of uh, of distance to the rook, then it cannot be attacking the rook for a long time. And and white is under very serious pressure here. He's probably more or less lost. Uh, the threat is uh, is already this. And due to this pawn pinning uh, these two pawns, there's also uh, the probability that the, uh, even a king, uh, pure uh, king, uh, versus, uh, pawn ending uh, would just be losing. So he uh, and it's probably okay. The knight went back. It's hoping to settle here might actually be okay for black for white if he gets there but the transportation into a rook ending is just devastating taking over the c file and uh, there's pawns pawn here and here and black is much more active have a dynamic pawn structure the rook ending is simply winning um check and check and and this is kind of fun. Uh, uh, Lutz has obviously seen that that this is what you do uh, in Petrosian style. When you are winning, you just uh, repeat moves a few times just to imp show your opponent that he cannot do anything. And here, the king come forward. You couldn't cover the b pawn, uh, but you can cover the h pawn. And uh, the thing is, <laughs> White wants to control uh, this square to avoid this move uh, but he will also have to cover this one and um, and he will have to to stay here to avoid if he goes here then this pawn wins this pawn and if he goes here then this one down here is lost immediately g2 oops and g4 is, is probably a little bit too desperate so rook c4 rook a3 Rook a1, king e2, rook a2, king e1, rook bam bam, just check, and rook b2. And it's Sukhsvang. White has no move. If he goes here, comes this move. If he goes here, oops, let's just go. If he goes here, comes this move. 
even worse probably and um, and if he moves uh, the rook somewhere then comes this move so all together total disaster rook a4 black wins a pawn and uh, and the base the problem is he, he will run out of squares uh, very soon. Uh, Black will put his rook here, and uh, you, you will not have enough squares to avoid the king from coming in here. You will only have the a4 square, and, uh, and again, uh, the, the king has to cover both uh, these pawns. So uh, he panicked with e4, but it's of course uh, lost. It doesn't change anything. And uh, yeah. And this is it. The king is coming in, and of course it's it's winning. By the way, it's it's much better to have a double pawn in these situations because it shelters the king from the behind. So this was the easy structure in another video, uh, and we are getting really smart now on the end game and how to play the end game with the easy structure. Uh, the next video on easy structure will be a bonus videos for members only with a brilliant attack by yours truly so uh, don't forget to be a member even though it costs a little bit thank you for watching this was tm talks